Welcome to Mac and PC Prime video. Today I am show you. Is the new M1 iMac just a silly sized M1 iPad, M1 MacBook, an M1 Mac Mini stretched out like pizza dough? We'll only know by getting inside, however tough that might be. It's time for a teardown. Surprise the only way inside is through that new 4.5K screen, so thankfully the adhesive. Holding it in place is forgiving our iMac opening tool. Does the trick perfectly this is nowhere? Near as nice as the magnets that held in the ancient iMac screens. But at least it's not iPad. Adhesive our fist look inside reveals an empty looking machine but remember a lot of this. Space was taken up by the display hardware. One thing's for sure there's a lot of metal. There's two massive grill chambers the stand contact hardware a plate over the Apple logo and twin plates covering what looks like a pair CMO's batteries tucked into the chin is the logic board. Surrounded by fans and speakers and masked by this shield the shield has some Torx screws holding it down but won't fully come out until you remove the extra screws. Hidden under this black sticker the board is similar to the one we saw in the M1 MacBook Air and is held down with 2.5mm nuts a strange choice but again anything is better than glue before we take a closer look at the silicon ill pull the fans out so we can take a look at the whole cooling system together for screws hold the heat pipe on and underneath is the star of the show the M1 chip. The small heat pipe draws heat away from the M1 and into the heat sinks where it gets blown away by the two fans our mid-tier model comes within. Addition to the 8-core M1 system on chip. This side, thanks to the M1 architecture, this is the smallest iMac logic board yet. Let's take a closer look. Apple APL 1102-339S0081764-bit M1 8-core SoC, system on a chip. SK Hynix H9 HCNNNCRM MVGR NEH 8GB, 2x4GB, LPDDR4 memory. Kyoxia KICM 225VE 4779-128GB NAND flash storage. Murata 339S00763 Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth module. Apple APL 1096-343S00474 Power Management IC. Apple APL 1097-343S00475 Power Management IC. Riktek RT4541 GQV Power Management IC. Let's put this thing down, flip it, and reverse it. Kyoxia KICM 225VE 4779-128GB NAND flash storage. Macronix MX 25U 6472F 64MB serial nor flash memory. Broadcom BCM 57762 Ethernet Controller. Infineon, formerly Cypress Semiconductor, CYPDC 1185 B2-32 LQXQ USB-C Cable Controller. Texas Instruments TPS 259827 on 15-amp E-Fuse with load current monitoring and transient fault management. Cirrus Logic CS42 L83A Audio Codec. A mysterious button with three LEDs beneath it, what could it be for? Diagnostics? Secret direct Morse code line to Tim Cook? Leave your thoughts in the comments. With this wafer thin interconnect board out, let's dive in for our second helping of chip ID. Analog devices, formerly linear technology, LTC 3890 2 2 phase synchronous step down converter. Analog Devices SSM3515B31 Watt Class D Audio Amplifier Intel JHL8040 R Thunderbolt 4 Retimer Texas Instruments CD3218B12 USB-C Port Slash Power Delivery Controller Texas Instruments TMP464 5 Channel Temperature Sensor AS Media ASM3142 PCIe to USB 3.1 Gen 2 Controller AS Media ASM 1543 10 Gbps for colon 2 MUX switch with USB-C 3.1 compatibility. Next, let's zoom in on that battery board. The two pins on the output connector show 3V, which suggests these are probably CMOS batteries wired in parallel. But why two of them? And why the strange placement in the middle of the enclosure? Ordinarily, we'd expect to find a single CR2032 battery protecting the NVRAM, like on previous iMacs. 
If you, like us, and some keen-eyed tweeters, guessed those shiny metal chambers were part of the new speaker system, you were right. They're impossibly thin, about 1.5 mm at the opening, but their sprawling surface area equates to quite a lot of internal volume, and therefore more air, and fuller sound. Pretty nifty use of what might otherwise be empty space. Speaking of air, our mid-tier iMac comes with two small fans, versus just one in the base model. This marks the first dual fan setup in an M1 machine, which ought to be more than enough, considering how well the completely fanless M1 MacBook Air seems to perform with the exact same chip. Let's talk ports. The USB-C boards flip up like the covers of cigarette lighter sockets in your car. From there, they easily disconnect from the, crazy thin, interconnect board. Even these little guys are color-coordinated. We don't always agree with Apple's choices, but there's no denying their efforts making them. What else can we shake out of this iMac pad? We find a modular headphone jack. Good news, considering this could be the port that sees the most action. The chassis thinness does have a silver lining, the headphone jack isn't on the back. A power button mounted on a sturdy metal bracket, which is glued directly to the enclosure. It actuates on a little hinge. The studio quality triple microphone array, two up top and one facing forward near the camera.